Uh, incredibly proud. I really am. Um, I, when you lose a series four to one, you know it, it's it's hard to you know find that silver lining. You know because we didn't win, and that, that's what we came here for tonight was to win the game. Um, but as a head coach, I couldn't be more proud of a group that could have rolled over after the third game, fought at home to extend the series, and put ourselves in a great position. I mean, all these people out there, no one gave us a chance to win the series. And I think there are a lot of people that were saying that tonight was going to be a rout. We're going to get blown out. Um, and that's not who we are. You know, and uh, so as a coach, for every player in that locker room that played, that didn't play, extremely proud um, for getting through an 82-game season with 48 wins in light of different injuries and circumstances, uh, and, and, and playing a team that is battle-tested in the Golden State Warriors in, in game three, four, and five, we gave ourselves a chance every night. So uh, I'm going to go home with my head held high, as are my players, and we know that we will continue to work and uh, put the time in to come back a better team next season. Nicola obviously gave you everything he had, I think 30, 19, and then foul trouble inhibited him in the fourth quarter. Was he laboring at all? Was he battling anything else throughout the game? Yeah, I think uh, going into the game, his hamstring was really tight. You know, was, uh, he was dealing with that a little bit. Uh, and let's be honest, the, just the cumulative toll of the bubble last season, this season, everything that has been placed on his shoulders. You know, I'm sure he was definitely uh, fatigued. Uh, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, but he fights through it. I mean, that guy is a warrior. Um, I just don't understand the people that find a way to criticize Nicole Jokic. Is he perfect? No, I'm not saying he is, but uh, the guy is the definition of a warrior, uh, competitive, consistent, and he impacts the game in so many ways. Um, so, hell of a season, and, and hopefully he'll win um, the, the MVP again because I think rightfully he deserves it. Coach, the uh, defense by both teams, full throttle tonight. When you looked out at that stat sheet, how tough is it to mm. avoid seeing the free throws missed? Yeah, I, it's funny, Vic, when you bring that up, man. I know you can simplify this game with saying it's a make or miss league, um, but we leave nine free throws on the board, 20 to 29. And just look at the three-point shooting. I mean, we, we, we were 6 of 29, 21%. They were 13 of 31 um, th that was probably one of the things that it came down to. We, we had rebounded him. We dominated the glass. We beat him on the break. We beat him in the paint. Uh, I thought we had great defensive possessions. To hold that team to 102 points in a closeout game in this building, uh, I think phenomenal effort. We just needed some life, to some of those open threes to go in to kind of get us over the hump, and we just, you know, just didn't have it, unfortunately. Michael, Austin's been a huge part of what you guys have done defensively. He's not out there in that second and third quarter when you guys seem to be at your best defensively. What stood out about what you guys did in those two quarters on that end? I, I think just uh, like we've done for years now, Vinny, one guy goes down, somebody else steps up. Uh, Austin is a guy that every time we've beaten this team, regular season and postseason, he's been a very uh, key part of that. So when he goes down, I extended Monte, I extended Will, got Bones in the game, played Aaron, obviously, at the three. Uh, and guys just stepped up. You know, uh, that's the biggest thing, man, like human nature. Uh, you're staring a 3-1 deficit in the face. Human nature is just roll over, man. Like, I'm ready to go home. Uh, and, and our guys don't have that, and, and I wouldn't let them have that. Um, so everybody just stepped up. I think we were physical. We made them work. We had some breakdowns. Steph hit like three threes in a row. We were down the floor. And, you know, he's a two-time MVP winner himself. Like, he's a great player. And you have to give Gary Payton the third a lot of credit, man. That guy made... Uh, really key baskets for them. I think he had 15 points, made three threes, and it's tough when you give so much attention to Steph, Clay, and Jordan Poole, and then other guys make the plays, and uh, you have to tip your hat to those guys. Michael, Nicole is obviously never going to complain. Like We know that, but could you get a feel throughout this season just h how tough the load was that, that he had to carry, and if that weighed on him you know, from game one to game 82, could you sense that at all? Honestly, uh, no. You know, that's just, it's not in his nature. You know what I mean? Um, I, I think the most appalling trait of any human being is self-pity. And uh, that's one thing you're never going to see Nicole Jokic have in his, in his heart, in his mind. You know, he's not a guy that feels sorry for himself. Was he tasked with a tremendous responsibility, Harrison? Yes, he was. 
Um, but I think, you know, all the other guys in that locker room did their best to try to help him throughout. And uh, that's what makes him such a special player. He was able, 48 wins for this team. You know, I, I think people look at that and just don't give that enough credit. I, I think that locker room and they're winning 48 games in the Western Conference uh, is incredible. And once again, last four seasons, nobody in the West has won more than the guys in that locker room. And obviously, Nicole is a very, very, very big part of that. Michael, uh, DeMarcus, 19 points in, in 15 minutes. How satisfying, given your guys' history, was it to see that from him? And, and you know, he's a free agent this summer. Do, do you want him back this summer or, or next, you know, next season? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll let the, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to a private island in the South Pacific somewhere and drink some Mai Tais and think about the season in review. Um, but all I'll say is this, I gave him a big hug in the locker room and I gave him a shout out in front of his teammates. Here's a guy that was just hanging out at home in Las Vegas after being released by Milwaukee. And he goes out in an elimination game and puts up, as you said, 19 points in 15 minutes. Nicole is in foul trouble. We need somebody to steady the ship. Uh, and DeMarcus did that. So uh, the biggest thing is I'm just really, really happy for DeMarcus Cousins. And I'm so proud of him for staying with it. And, um, you know, he, he had an impactful run with the Denver Nuggets. And we'll figure out, you know, the offseason uh, in the coming weeks as we, you know, meet Tim and Josh, sit down and talk. Michael, these last two postseasons, you've had to work shorthanded. <clears throat> what is this team going to be like when it's fully healthy with a healthy Jamal Murray and a healthy Michael Porter Jr. to go with a possible two-time MVP? Yeah, I think it's uh, scary to think about that. You know, it's... Uh, I go back to last season before Jamal's injury in this building, uh, and we felt we had a le legitimate chance to win a championship last year. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, it just wasn't in the cards for us. Jamal suffers the ACL. Earlier this season, Michael Porter Jr. suffers a back. Um, and you're playing without two max players that have both helped us advance out of the first round the last three years. Um, so when they're getting back and they're healthy, I think that's going to make us a, a, a deeper, more talented team. And um, you know, I, I'm excited about that. I really am. I, th I think the future is very, very bright for the Denver Nuggets. Coach Aaron Gordon, at times, he went beast mode tonight. What, what sparked that? What triggered that change in aggressive play by him? Yeah, I, I really think, Vic, it was when we left San Francisco after game two, um, I think Aaron was uh, oh, probably re just really, really hard on himself. I think he realized that in game one and two, uh, he did not have the performance or impact that he, his standards, uh, he didn't live up to. And, you know, it was really simple coming back because I, I felt not just tonight, Vic, I felt game three, four, and five, I felt Aaron Gordon was the Aaron Gordon that we need for the next three, four years as we make a run to a championship, an aggressive Aaron Gordon, a physical Aaron Gordon, a guy that just sitting down in the post, getting big, attacking the basket, getting offensive rebounds, running, defending, everything that we asked him to do. Um, you know, so I was, you know, 15 and nine tonight, two block shots, uh, got to the foul line eight times, six offensive rebounds. So, um, an aggressive Aaron Gordon is an effective Aaron Gordon, and that's, that's what we need from Aaron every night. Michael, you mentioned the future, but can you expound a little bit on, on how you see this group the next couple of years? Joker's still young. Obviously, you get Jamal back. Uh, you know, hopefully, Michael's back is good, but you know, that success the last couple of years and, and where you all can take this, how do you see it? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, as I mentioned, the future is definitely bright, Sam. Uh, I think we also have to understand that you know Jamal Murray to start the season next year is not going to be the Jamal Murray right away. I think it's going to be a build-up. It's going to be him getting comfortable and confident out there. Um, so, um, but when you, I, I did it during uh, the, the first two games here. I went back. I couldn't sleep one night. So at three o'clock in the morning, I'm looking at what Jamal Murray's stats were in the bubble. And I'm saying, wow. You know, I mean, I knew he was good, but sometimes you forget how good he was. Um, and that's the thing about Jamal. When, when the stakes are at their highest, he, he steps up and is never afraid of the moment. Uh, and Michael Porter, what he did last year in 10 playoff games, 17 points, 6 rebounds, but more importantly, shooting 
you know, a really high clip from the three-point line. You know, shooting makes up for so many things, and Jamal and Michael can do that. But with all that being said, um, I don't want to spend all this time talking about Jamal Murray and Michael Porter because the guys that played this whole season and, and just gave their all and put us in this position, I think, deserve so much love and respect. Uh, and I know I have that for those guys. So whenever the season ends, it's really hard. You know, you're on this long journey since September nonstop. And I always use the analogy. It's like being on a subway car. You know, somebody just pulled the emergency brake. And it's hard. For those guys, for me, for the coaches, tremendous staff, uh, David, Jordy, Popeye, the guys behind the bench, Ryan Bowen, Charles Klask, uh, I couldn't ask for a better staff who works their butts off. So uh, tough way to go out. Losing sucks. Uh, and big, uh, and last thing I'll say, I'll leave on this, congratulations to Golden State. Very good team. Uh, Steve Kerr, Mike Brown, Kenny Atkinson, their whole coaching staff, uh, good people over there, great coaches, and I wish those guys well. Monte, you guys had it within one possession, a minute or two left in the mm -hmm. game. Um, you, how proud are you of kind of the fight that you guys showed? And, you know, Malone just said a lot of people expect you guys to roll over. Yeah, uh, we show heart. I mean, I'm good with going to sleep, you know, at night when I know we all was together. You know, we was at the game. At the game two, we was just like this. And um, we gave away game three. Game four, we won. And tonight we came up short. But – I can honestly say, you know, and look ourselves and myself in the mirror and say we gave it our all them last three. And, and what's the sentiment in the locker room, um, you know, recognizing that you had a tough challenge coming back from 3-0, but, again, fighting? Um, just the character of this team, man. We could have easily rolled over. Um, everybody know that. Um, but we fought, and, you know, I got a lot of respect for, you know, everyone in that locker room uh, from – um, equipment managers, the people that don't get a lot of credit all the way down the line um, to the highest the highest degree. So, I mean, it was a hell of a season, um, tough season, but um, I say we, we beat adversity a lot of the times. Um, we, without Mike and Jamal, um, two great players, we still found ways in tough, hostile situations to win, and um, that just shows, you know, the character and how good, you know, we can be. Monte had a 10-point lead at one point, mm. up eight to start the fourth. When did things change and how? Um, it's a game of runs. I know we was up 10. Um, you know, that team, they score in bunches, so we couldn't get too high. You know, they shoot three, so when they went on their run, our biggest thing was just trying to keep the composure, just keep everything, um, not, not rushing the ball out and just going down there and not getting in any set. I think throughout the game we done, we did that. We was in sets after sets, and it showed we was getting great quality shots. Do you feel like, I mean, when you look at the stats, if you make your free throws, it might oh, be man, a different outcome. It's crazy. Uh, we missed a lot of free throws. Uh, I missed one myself. Um, and we missed some open threes. Uh, I think we got great looks. They tried to box and won the cola. Um, we all miss some some great looks from three, um, but you know at the end of the day, um, it's a make or miss league, and we can't you know trip over spoiled milk. It didn't happen tonight. We didn't make shots, and down the stretch, you know, got to take my hat off to uh, a good friend of mine, Gary Payton. Uh, great game. Uh, you know he's not known for three point shooting, but um, that just shows the character how good he is. Um, just being ready when your moment, you know. Uh, presents itself and he hit some big threes. Uh, take my hat off to him. Monte, when it comes over here, when it comes to the end of the season, just how how do you handle that? How how much time do you give yourself to reflect on yeah. what just happened, and then how quickly do you kind of start focusing on the off season? Um, I mean, you dwell on it. Um, it's gonna be tough. Um, you know, I have a 24-hour rule. You know, with games, but when it's your last game, you kind of dwell on it more. Um, but you go back to the drawing board. Um, I challenged myself. I had good career numbers uh, this year, but um, I wasn't as efficient as I thought I could be. So um, I'm going to work my tail off this summer and uh, come back better and, um, well, a lot better and um, not trying to, you know, have this feeling again. Monte, the fact that uh, Golden State, I think they were the second best defense in the league this season, they had to go to a box and one to defend Nicola. Does, is that kind of just like symbolic to you guys of how tough he is to stop? Yeah, I mean, um, he attracts so much attention. 
and he's still putting up, you know, crazy numbers. Um, most guys, when double team, triple teams are come, you know, they fan away from it. But, you know, he wants the ball. He wants the big moment. That's why, you know, he's definitely MVP. Um, I love playing with him. He has a lot of confidence in every single one of us, you know, and he's so unselfish. Um, you know, he'll tell you to come off and look to be aggressive and not always, you know, give me the ball and things like that. That's not his character, and that's why you don't find a lot of genuine guys like that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's great playing alongside of him. Monte, you've known Draymond for a long yeah. time. What was it like to go up against him for an entire series, see him defensively yeah. try to match it against Jokic? I mean, Draymond, uh, you know, since Michigan State, I mean, it was even since Saginaw High, um, he always had that grit, that dog. He always been a winner, um, know how to win. Um, not too flashy. He's not a guy who would go out there and get you 30 on a night. But, you know, his goal is to bring the energy, um, stop guys, you know, and make you think on offense. You know, he'll rotate when it's not even his rotation. Um, stuff you can't even really scout. Um, that just shows how high his basketball IQ is. But, you know, it was a great series, man. Love that dude. And uh, going forward, you know, it definitely taught me something and gave me more experience. So you can't never um, be mad about gaining experience. So going up against a great team like that and vets like that, um, you know, afterwards they told me they got a lot of respect for me. Um, and sky's the limit. And you guys have been playing shorthanded for so long now. Yeah. What's it going to be like when you have a healthy Jamal and healthy Michael Porter Jr. Um, with this team? It should be fun. Um, I think uh, like a lot of people don't even know, you know, how well they're looking, um, you know, individually. But you know, we all put them together. It's going to be just like you know, we never left. It was big time when we was doing it. Made some great three-one comebacks and some big wins. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, like Coach said, um, they're two great guys, um, but we can't, you know, take away with how, you know, Bones played, you know, stepped up this year um, with guys going out. That's a big role, you know, as a rookie. Um, and signing Boogie, man. Boogie, you know, he – he cost it. He cost himself a lot of money this year, but but he uh, love him to death. Um, guy to we pick up late had 19 points. You know, in a door die elimination game, just shows how much heart he has and how much um, love he has for the game. So I'm I'm definitely proud of him. Monte, I was gonna ask about Boogie. Um, yeah. Do, you know, from what he showed tonight, from how, how impactful he's been in the locker room. Do you you know do you vouch for him? Do you want him to come back this yeah, this I mean, next season? I mean, I vouch for I vouch for everybody. Um, my thing is, you know, it's a brotherhood. You know, it's bigger than basketball. Um, he's a he's a great guy. You know, he has a you know a great family, um, great kids, and amazing wife. Um, I look at things bigger than just just ball. And he's a guy that's been through a lot, you know, on and off the court and experience wise. He can help, um, you know, anybody. You know, it's a lot that he's seen. So having that around, uh, I think it's big. So um, I, vouch, I vouch for the type of man someone is, you know, off the court and also on the court, not so much to play. Yeah.